right, it's Dan Carr from Robotics Trends. I'm here with Pittsburgh base, uh, in Pittsburgh based Boston Over Robotics, speaking with Sir June. Sir June, how are you doing today? Very well. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, before we begin with the questions, maybe you can describe the products that you have available for sale now. Yeah, Boston Over Robotics has a line of I Love Robots toys, uh, robot toys that we are putting on the market in 2010. They are Primate, who is a gorilla robot. Um, he is aged six to eight year old uh, and up, and he is loud, fast, and powerful. He uh, he's very interactive. He also shoots rockets and fires lasers. Okay. Uh, Penbo is a penguin robot for ye for ages four and up, and she is interactive. She is um, very animated. She dances. She even has a baby, and the baby itself is interactive. And he, the baby talks to the mom, and the mom and the baby play games together. Great. And can you speak to the subject of having two different versions? Clearly it looks as though Primate's made for boys and Pembo is targeted to girls. What went into those types of decisions and how you would create a robot and, and have a robot act and, and look in a certain way? We really designed the robots to target a specific age group. And so for Pembo, Penbo does not come with a controller. Instead, the interaction is based on sound and touch. And we've seen that both actually boys and girls play, play with Penbo, for which we were very, very pleased. Uh, Primate is a slightly older age group that likes to control uh, things, including robots and video games. And in our case, they, like, they would love to control uh, Primate and take control of how to maneuver him. And so with the controller that you get with Primate, you can make him run, you can make him shoot lasers at other robots and play laser tag. So it's about mastering the play pattern and it's about being powerful. Can you speak to the issue of the underlying mobility technology in these products? And also, how did you drive down costs so that you could get that type of technology into a, a consumer product? A lot, of the the, a lot of the mobility technology was uh, inspired from research happening within the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. We, we developed robots for research that had phenomenal mobility, legged mobility that looks alive. And by seeing the response that people had to those research robots, we immediately understood that mobility creates an emotional connection with the users. And so we embarked on a two-year journey developing technology that captures that magic mobility but can deliver it at an affordable price and with reliability that makes it acceptable to a consumer. And we developed the distribution channels that allow us to take that mobility and put it, make it available to the end user. And the very important part is that mobility itself is not sufficient. So we included, we, for us, mobility is an, in, in, an enabling technology to create a unique experience between the user and the robot. And so our robots have character, have personality. That personality leverages mobility, but is not limited to it. So for example, primate can be loud, can be vociferous, can also be silly and make you laugh. Uh, similarly, Penbo, uh, uses mobility to express that she's happy, so she is dancing, for example, or to play games, so she plays hide and seek. We spoke a little bit about driving down the prices for this type of technology that spun out of research, but there's another side to it as well. How do you make something cheaply enough, but also robust enough, so that a four-year-old to eight-year-old can use it without breaking it or themselves getting hurt? hurt? Yeah, this is a very, very good point. It was a major part of the two year of development that we, that, that we embarked on. It's, not, um, it's a discipline that we have learned. And uh, that, it's a discipline that we have learned. And we've learned it in, collabor in, in collaboration with our manufacturing partners who have experience developing robust products toys and consumer electronics uh, over years. So for in our case, we had to learn how to make the technology uh, efficient enough so that it can be powered with off-the-shelf batteries, for example. We made it robust enough that if you drop the robot from a table, he will not break um, and most likely will continue operating. We uh, developed it such that it's also safe. We have put safety features in it. The design itself will prevent any finger pinching. We have sensors that will uh, prevent the robot from moving if you ever 
wedge your finger under his feet, for example. So those features are integral to the design of the robot. It's a discipline that, need, that forces you to think safety through the design from the beginning. And that's something that is uh, a, a great asset for Bossa Nova because we have learned this discipline and we will continue delivering it in the consumer robots that we will build in the future. Well, one of the, uh, the disadvantages of being a consumer robotics product, and particularly a toy product, unlike, say, military robots or surgical robots, is that every penny counts when you're building these things. Can you, can you discuss a little bit about the overseas manufacturing of the product and the process you went through to secure those manufacturers? It was a very interesting uh, process. We have uh, built relations with top-tier manufacturers in Hong Kong and China. And those are uh, the manufacturers of the consumer robots that you see today in the market. So we really went to uh, the best-in-class manufacturers. Manufacturing is very interesting because it imposes constraints on the way you build the product. You design a product for, many, for mass production is very different from designing a product as a prototype. And that discipline forces us to make often um, to make sometimes compromises on the product itself in terms of functionality. But what we have learned is once we put those constraints on the robot so that it is mass manufacturable, we can then go back and redesign features to take advantage of those constraints and, and, and deliver an even more compelling experience than we thought we could at the beginning. So that process of developing a mass, pro mass producible product is, is really interesting. It takes time to learn. It did take us two, the better part of two years, um, but it's very enriching, and it will allow us, as I said, to keep delivering on those consumer robots. Earlier on, we were discussing how you had changed the form factor of the robot to get around the problem of having to put in high-level sensors and, and expensive technology into the robot, so actually using the robot's form factor to... Uh, and, and to overcome the need for having high-priced technology. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, Primate is a, a running robot that runs on his arms. And being a gorilla, it made sense to have large arms. And this was actually very interesting because the arms are shaped very precisely and the weight of the robot is... Um, the weight of the robot is, uh, sorry, the center of gravity of the robot is configured also very precisely so that the robot can balance on those two arms without the need of expensive gyroscopes. In essence, he is like a biped that can balance without sensing. This is a technology that we developed that um, we have filed a patent to protect. And it allows the robot to locomote on his arms at very low cost. The other thing it allows us is to have the robot uh, do tricks, stand on his head, uh, do push-ups, pretend he's swimming, do a lot of creative things that you could only do if you had this technology, and we really had a lot of fun developing them. Uh, speaking of development, what is the, the, the biggest surprise that you have found moving from being a researcher into someone developing consumer robotics products, particularly toys, I think the biggest lessons I had to learn is the way people, we, I had to learn the way people relate to products, the way they think, what makes them tick. And that was based on market research, on talking to people, doing focus groups, doing a lot of things that researchers not, do not necessarily do within the robotics industry, uh, the robotics research. And we totally had to learn how to do that. And that was integral for us to design products that people at the end of the day would love to, to, to acquire and play with. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All the luck in the world. Thank you.